Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you here. It's a little bit early in the morning, I think. Not so many people. So we can all, could all sit around one round table. We actually have no round table. It's an octagon table, but it's used by the project. Also, we are sitting here, okay? Yes. Uh, so far for the introduction, I think um, I will hand over the, the mic to uh, the representatives of a derivative and for a short introduction. And then we keep on walking on the keep on talking on the following topics. If you want to see how to uh, join the Gobi talk, it's written here. Um, there you can see the instruction how to how you can join this the Gobi editor and edit your own ideas. If somebody would like to look on IRC channel Debian Auditorium, it would helpful be helpful if there are questions from somewhere else. So. I'm handing over the microphone to Moritz Mühlenhoff. Hi, my name is Moritz Mühlenhoff. I think most of you know me. Um, being a Debian developer for a few years, um, during my regular work time, I work for Univention, which I'm also representing as of today. Um, Univention builds um, the Univention corporate server, a Debian-derived distribution targeted at mostly enterprise customers and predominantly in the German-speaking region. We have quite a large customer base inside Germany and also a fairly significant one in Switzerland and also a few customers in Austria. There are also a few um, um, customers outside of the German-speaking region, but it's only a few ones since um, a lot of the whole um, business being driven, like supporting Univention Corporate Server is usually done by partner companies and the whole network of partner companies is pretty sparse outside of Germany and um, Switzerland. Um, Univention Corporate Server is a bit um, distinct in regard to many other Debian derived, Debian derived distributions as it's built on stable. Um, we're not um, taking snapshots like other distributions, but instead we build on, um, on the latest Debian stable release. Our current version is still based on Lenny, and we're working towards a release um, built on Squeeze, which will be released at the end of this year. Um, if you're wondering about the target audience, um, several, I think the majority of our customers um, use, um, you mentioned corporate server, to deploy workstations based with Windows, so that, um, of course, Zamba is one of the very important key factors of Univention Corporate Server and one of the unique features, which basically um, is provided by Univention Corporate Server, is tight LLAP integration of all the data. We have some fairly significant and really large installations, and I guess the overall um, figure in the, base, in the installation base is somewhere in the six digits figure. Hello, um, I'm Emmett Hickory. I'm going to be speaking on behalf of Ubuntu, and uh, I'm not going to go into long length about what that is. Um, I'm Michael Bokop, um, known as Mika. I'm here for the Grimmel Project, a live system for system administrators and for people who want to rescue data. Um, yeah, we are based on Debian Unstable and shipping a few extra packages, and that's about it. Hello, I'm Intrigeri, speaking on behalf of Tails, the amnesic incognito life system, which purpose is to preserve your privacy and anonymity, mainly by uh, forwarding every outgoing internet traffic you may generate through the Tor network, and Second purpose is to leave no trace on the computer your, the user is using. So it's a live system that's built using the Debian Live Toolkit. And it's based on Debian Stable. And we try to stay the closest we can to Debian, which means improving Debian sometimes. <laughs> it's now two years old. And well, Mm, it's now quite mm, well known and used in the well, among the people who, who use Tor. It's uh, listed in the official Tor projects page, and mm, we somehow know that 
one tail system is booted um, all around the world um, almost every minute. And that's all for now. So, um, I test. Um, speaker two. It is on. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? So, my name is Andreas Tille. I'm um, not speaking for, for der derivative. I'm working in Debian for Debian Pure Blends. Specifically, my blend is uh, Debian Mate, and um, in principle, there should be somebody speaking for Debian Edu. We try to uh, make sure that uh, specific target groups inside Debian are served, hopefully, well. And this could be a preparation for a derivative or it could be a reason not to derive from Debian because you could, uh, in principle, do everything inside Debian. And so I'm always interested, uh, what can Debian make uh, to be more flexible, um, to be more, uh, better usable for our users with specific needs? And so for, uh, the, I want, uh, would like to learn how, the, how we can make also the work of the derivatives easier. So if, if you have some, some ideas um, what Debian can do better, please, uh, I don't know uh, if it makes sense to have a sequence, just say who wants to say something. Okay. Well, I think from a, uh, from a distribution point of, um, um, there's really not much to ask for. Um, the the um, release cycle is pretty pretty nice, and um, two years fit, uh, suits us very well. Um, most of the problems we're having um, are rather direct upstream problems. There's no specific um, problems with regard to Debian that I'm aware of. Um, most of the problems we're running into is um, is a lot in the X world, because if you want to provide, right now most of the customer base is targeted towards servers, so graphic adapter support doesn't matter very much. But um, since, since we also have a few, um, uh, a few areas where we are actually supposed to graphic drivers, um, especially when it comes to serving thin clients, um, the, the non-back portability of current XORG drivers is really one of the major problems. Um, but this is, of course, nothing which, which um, is, is a problem which can be solved by Debian. So from a Debian perspective, I don't see any problem. It's all good. The, the main thing that uh, Debian could do for Ubuntu is continue maintaining all the software and being friendly to new people joining Debian from Ubuntu. Thank you for doing that now, and please keep it up. Um, the other is that I hope more people can understand that Ubuntu is not monolithic. I often encounter some individual Debian maintainer saying, Ubuntu put this patch on my package, I don't like it. And in only one case was that actually me, but every time I hear that I feel like I'm at fault. And I encourage to contact the person who made something. It's usually in a change log and it can often be resolved relatively easily. We are building uh, Grimmel on Debian Unstable, so we don't depend on any release cycle. Um, we need um, current software um, to rescue data. Um, so we are pretty happy with over all what we get, and I didn't know a single item I should write under your know, question <laughs> what uh, Debian could do better for us, so I'm very happy. Mm. Tails and what tails could benefit from Debian more um, is mostly stuff that is specific to live systems. For example, it happened a few times that we prepared and shipped um, a new tails release, and well, two days later there was a Debian security announce about uh, important serious security issues that were fixed in, say, IceWizzle which is one of the most dangerous internet-facing applications we ship in Tails. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> at this time, well, we have been poking users to download new ISOs, and at, well, we should just start again in the, our release and tests and publishing process. 
and have users download yet another ISO. So one thing that could be really useful for us would be to be made aware, to have some way to be aware of security uploads that are being prepared so that in such a situation we can wait two days and ship the new Ice Weasel inside our new Tails release. Security team is answering now. I think I can answer it, um, not in my position as uh, working for Univention, but um, as someone who prepares um, security updates. Um, the, uh, the Mozilla updates are more or less scheduled monthly. Um, and even though um, they don't announce it publicly, um, if you Google um, for the next, um, if you Google for the subsequent Firefox version, for example, so if there's Firefox 3.6.17, if you Google for 3.6.18, you will find um, some link in the um, Mozilla wiki, which sets the release date of the next security update. And since all of these monthly updates are essentially always bundling security fixes, um, you can more or less estimate that one to three days after that, the Debian XUL runner update will take place. It's okay, thanks. It's great to hear there is some kind of productivity for as, as far as um, Ice Weasel is concerned, but it also happened for, say, many libraries that Ice Weasel depends on, such as Liptif and the usual <laughs> guilty ones, and uh, also the, the kernel. So, well, probably we should discuss this outside of the run table. Just wanted to mention the issue we're facing. Thanks anyway. So I try to summarize. We have uh, the to-do list is for Debian is uh, uh, empty because of release three, and you have perhaps not. It's just not a to-do list, but having a better communication channel. It's it is rise. Uh, it's okay summarize. So the, the to-do list for Debian is basically. Uh, done this place I'm very happy and um, perhaps you can uh, say something what you can do for Debian or what want you, you to do for Debian to make it even better um, well from the um, aspect what what is currently being done um, of course one of the um, one of the aspects is, is being in the case of financial support like sponsoring debconf which is currently done or um, or it's like sponsoring the, the CBIT booth um, each year, which, which gives um, Debian the, the, um, the, the, the possibility to present it at, at the CBIT um, conference usually. Um, from, a, from a code perspective, um, it's, it's a bit the case that since we're only basing on the um, stable release of Debian and we try to, to be as close as possible, there's not that much really um, which needs to be flown back if if there's for example um, a significant change in the debian um, infrastructure like for example the the move from use splash as the splash screen solution towards plymouth um, then we're rather adapting our own internal solutions rather than working around it and um, since we're essentially building on a stable release and since there's also an an unsolvable lag until the next Univention corporate server release can be based on the next stable release. It's usually that up to that point, we're essentially basing ourselves on the first or second point release of each Debian release. So most of the um, more awkward box are already also fixed in Debian at that point. We made a um, complete rebuild of Squeeze from source, which resulted in only, I think, about 10 um, failed to build from source failures, uh, which is remarkably good given that it's, I think, almost 15,000 packages. And I think we've sent patches for all of these, or almost all of these. Some of them are not quite clear where the result is. And I think some of these have also been um, um, released now as part of the, of the second point release for Squeeze and other patches are waiting. Um, and in many cases where we are working very close with upstream, um, we are rather working directly with the upstream maintainers and not, not channeling all the work through the Debian maintainers. Because for some reasons, especially in the whole virtualization areas, 
um, we need to be quite close to the current upstream release, and, in, and if we are doing any patches in that regard, we rather send them directly to the upstream maintainers and bypass the Debian maintainers, as long as the Debian packaging is, is not concerned. The answer we usually give to this question is, we have lots of users. Uh, I like to believe that we filter the input of these users and provide a source of informed bugs, new contributors, patches, whatnot. In practice, the value of this varies hugely depending on the package. Uh, for packages that are mostly the same, as long as we pay attention to it, it's useful. If it's a package that we neglect, then maybe it receives more complaints than help. And if it's a package we change a lot, maybe it receives misinformed uh, patches or requests. Um, we have eight developers and we have um, three of them as DDs. Two of them are uh, Debian maintainers and in the new maintainer uh, queue to become DDs. Uh, we have nowadays one um, developer which is not officially a Debian developer but who does uh, great work in the set shell, uh, one of our most important packages because uh, that's something we is very special for Grimmer because it's our default interactive shell. And um, we are contributing to several um, important packages for us, um, like in the drama fest tools, uh, live boot, uh, stuff from the Debian Live team, um, full automated installation package. Um, and um, what we can do for Debian is um, QA in unstable because we do run uh, daily builds, so we catch errors um, pretty early, um, earlier than most users, and we try to report any bugs we find. So um, it's not also solved for us, but um, for the user, um, and maybe that's work that's not that uh, obvious for uh, many people, but that's something which is a very nice workflow for us. And um, we are working on contributing back a few Debian packages um, we built for ourselves. Um, all the ones that are not Grimmel specific um, already flew back. Um, and we have Grimmel Bootstrap and Grimmel Satchel RC, which we try to uh, incorporate in main Debian. Mm. Well, our main participation in Debian as Tails is to bring quite a lot of non tech savvy users who would probably not try Debian um, if it was not thanks to Tails to use Debian somehow. And um, our user communication, our communication channels with users show that quite a lot of them um, install Debian as their main operating system afterwards. <laughs> Also, as a live system, we, our ISO images are um, allowed to reproduce bugs quite easily. <laughs> we just have to point a Debian package maintainer to a given ISO image, and it's really easy to, to, to reproduce a bug this way. Um, we participate in the Debian Live Toolkit development a bit. We intend to do more on this side. And um, we are curious enough to start building Tails images based on the upcoming stable release quite early during the Debian release process. For example, we st already started building images based on, based on testing. So at least um, our build process is somehow some kind of automated test bed, test bed for the installation of a given set of packages with specific requirements and human testing afterwards. Yes, there's, there's some questions from the audience. Oh, it's not working. Sorry. It, it is working? Oh, yes. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Thanks. Matthias Huber of Linux Magazine. Um, I'd like to ask the Ubuntu representative. I'm sorry I didn't get your name. Emmett Hickory? Uh, Emmett, Emmett Hickory? Okay, Emmett Hickory, is that? Yes. Um, Emmett, um, I'd like to know a bit more about uh, what Ubuntu contributes back to Debian because 
this has been a, a matter of dispute, how much you give back and in what ways. And you, you're doing a lot with Debian, and I think you have a lot of QA in place also. And, and uh, is there a benefit for Debian? So we have mostly the similar packages as Debian and some millions of users. And our support teams tend to report bugs into us, and our developers tend to review those and generate patches. Men much of the time, those patches will be sent to Debian if they aren't Ubuntu specific. Uh, we encourage that because it makes our lives easier and improves the ecosystem in general. Um, when we have new packages, we encourage all new packages to go through the Debian ITP process and for people who want to work on new packages to be Debian maintainers or Debian developers to do that. We have uh, trained many developers who are coming to free software and encountered Ubuntu and as people become more proficient with deb format packages, they tend to say, well, I can do this in Debian. And we help people go across that and have tens of developers at least, including many that have very significant software stacks that they maintain in Debian or significant roles within the Debian project. Thank you. Yeah. I tried to, to summarize. Um, I think uh, for, for those um, distributions which are uh, which are company driven, we have to thank you for sponsoring DebConf and so. This is one, uh, this is one I company. I can't take that yeah. compliment because from my perspective we are, although we have a number of sponsors, 15 or 20, we are not so much driven by a company. Of our... Yeah, no, no, I mean Ubuntu is company driven. Uh, this I and, uh, won't anyway. agree with that. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I try a different word in. I, I thank uh, Univention and Ubuntu for sponsoring DebConf. It's okay. Except that Ubuntu didn't. You should thank Canonical. Canonical does great Canonical. work, and Canonical. I'm, I'm very sorry. Depth I'm. Depth I'm, depth. I'm <laughs> I thank Canonical. Yeah. Th okay. Thank, yeah, thank yeah. Univention yeah. and then thank Canonical. But uh, uh, Ubuntu <laughs> isn't funded well enough to okay. have done that. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, I think you got the message. And um, uh, the other thing, what all these distribution is uh, are doing, is um, bringing more uh, users indirectly and partly also the directly to Debian. This is also quite helpful, I think. And I think there was some uh, sense in, in the, to the next uh, question, what uh, makes it easier for your distribution? Um, it might be that we could do some perhaps uh, re relaxed NMU uh, policy, because in all those derivatives are Debian developers. And if it makes more easy for you to, uh, to, uh, to build your distribution, if uh, some patches get uh, uh, faster, so it, it might help uh, in, in some respect. If do you agree, or have you other um, opinions? Well, um, well. Oh. well um, it working? What? It's working. Is it? Yeah, yeah it's working. Um, well, I think um, with regard to um, Univention Corporate Server, um, we don't really need a relaxed NMU policy um, because most of the stuff we want to be uh, want to address in Unstable um, is usually getting getting accepted pretty quickly. I don't think there are any patches um, which would need to be NMU since the maintainer usually uploaded them anyway and fixed them. And um, for all the patches which affect the stable release, um, I don't think that an relaxed NMU policy would bypass the stable release managers, and I don't think that would be really <laughs> nice. <laughs> In Ubuntu, we don't have a concept of maintainership of individual packages, and so everything's always an NMU. Um, as we send patches to Debian, we tend to get them adopted fairly quickly currently. That seems to be working. I'm not sure that having us change packages deliberately because a patch worked in Ubuntu without having the review of the maintainer is better for either distribution. Um, for the, the packages in Grimmel, we try to um, run peer reviews. Um, if anyone changes anything, um, another developer should uh, double check it. And everything that's um, derived from Debian should go back to Debian and we try to not NMU it unless the maintainer doesn't want to do the work. Um, but um, the, the policy works fine the way it is right now and it's not a big deal for us to, to solve the problems in, in Unstable.
Um, as far as Tails is concerned, we have we are no we have no upload right to the archive, so we mainly rely on friendly um, Debian developers who who see what we do with the, a friendly eye, <laughs> and so on. Probably uh, the case did not happen that often that uh, relax and MU policy would have er helped. Well, yeah, you you uh, have no upload rights to the Debian archive, but do you know the path how it could work? Sorry. Do you know the path how it could work? How you can could get upload rights? To sure, the sure. So, <laughs> are you working on this? Or? Sure. Okay. We are. That is. I think it's also uh, quite good because. Uh, by these uh, derivatives, people uh, have some some stronger interest to 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 get absolute right, become developer, and um, some people just become Debian developers because they want to do this. And I actually also learned that um, from my Debian Mid project. I think if if this Debian Mid project wouldn't exist, we would have l um, eight or ten Debian developers less because these people came to Debian to work on this uh, biological and medical stuff. And this, I think this is Im important and makes uh, Debian stronger. So um, any, any question from the auditorium, feel free to, to ask. Are you running a derivative? I'd just like, I'd just like to ask Moritz. Um, at what point during the Debian release process do you start preparing a new Univention um, release? Well, for the, uh, for the upcoming Squeeze release, um, we started the first initial rebuild um, as soon as Squeeze was released. And um, since then, we've um, initially we've first made an effort to um, at initial step to rebuild the package from scratch, and this this took about a month, and so essentially uh, one or few months after after the next. Um, so the, 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 I think the the first work started a few weeks after after the final squeeze release. Have Have you considered um, starting that process when the freeze happens? Um, Actually, some some very initial drafting work um, happened, but um, usually, as as with any company, um, you're always um, busy with other things. Also, so um, in order to to avoid um, additional overhead, because at at, at that point, um, where um, at at the very first initial um, stage of development, where you start by by rebuilding all the Debian packages from scratch. Um, there's there's not a lot of testing going on. Um, if it boots, then it's okay. And um, all the all the later refinement, like um, does everything really work as expected, and are there no significant errors, and and running all the test suites, um, only happens at a far later stage. And so for that matter, it wouldn't really um, change much whether we start with a freezed version or with frozen version or with with the released version. Any other question? Perhaps there's, there's a, a representative of the Debian live team or the, the live team itself. Could you, could you rise? <laughs> <laughs> do we, do, I just want, <laughs> want to ask you if, if you could uh, do something with, uh, because here's also a live team building, or uh, uh, they would have with, which has uh, live images. Do, do you have s some questions or? No, no question, okay. So. Uh, I don't have really much to add, but um, we're working with Tails since mm. a long time ago, and uh, we always appreciate their great patches, so please keep doing it. Okay. So what, what I also learned there was um, recently on the um, Debian um, Derivatives Exchange uh, mailing list, it's called Debian Dex at list.debian.org. There was an announcement about a um, new derivative which is basically um, preparing the desktop for young children or for parents to make it as simple as possible. And um, I had the pleasure to say that. In principle, there is in Debian something like this, like Debian Junior, and it was a little bit offhand. And I just gave the link to to the, uh, this person that um, there is something he could 
revitalize inside Debian and to, to prepare everything what he can do. Perhaps this is also a good idea if, if you have some intent to, to support a specific user group, just do it inside Debian and just um, do the last final bit which, which makes your product. Relabeling is, is in principle the, 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 the smallest change, what I would suggest, but uh, it is always a good idea to talk to us first what, what we can, can do and if there is something in preparation which can be helpful for you. So, do you have any other comments? Oh, oh, Colin. Uh, hi, sorry. Uh, I'd just like to respond to the... Um, I'm Colin Watson. I work for Ubuntu as well as on Debian. Um, I'd just like to respond to the query from Linux Magazine there as well as to your question about... Uh, uh, about uh, sort of NMU policy and that sort of thing. Um, I apologize for taking so long to reply, but it took the Debian BTS that long to answer my query. Um, the, uh, uh, so Ubuntu a while back started uh, tag user tagging everything we submit to Debian, partly in order that we could answer this kind of question with actual data rather than with, uh, with guesswork. Um, the, uh, we have about... Um, uh, Almost 500 patches outstanding in the in the bug tracking system right now. Um, the BTS is recording um, a further 1,600 resolved, and presumably there are rather more that have been archived at some point. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that's a fairly decent rate of uh, both patch flow and actually being applied in Debian. Um, the uh, there there are certainly cases where it would help if things move more quickly, but I suspect that uh, NMUing wouldn't necessarily be received well in all of those cases. Um, I would say that it's, uh, it's very useful for derivatives to do that kind of user tagging so that we can uh, actually have raw data that we can look at rather than uh, um, having to just work purely qualitatively. Um, so, sorry, not really a question, but I just wanted to see <laughs> yeah. No, there's no need for, for uh, only question. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? So it's um, do you do something about uh, accessibility, like testing, having uh, an accessibility group to check that things are accessible to blind death, etc. users. Um, we used to have a bunch of people using Grimmel for accessibility, the speak up they, stuff. They still do actually. I, d I know some people who are using yeah, it. Yeah. Um, we have a, a problem f um, from um, this perspective because um, we lack some hardware to test specific um, stuff. And whenever we call for testing and um, contributing back, um, we get close to zero return. So uh, I think you're the one maintaining the e -sp Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, if w there's anything we could um, do to improve working together or, or well, testing may or... May yeah. Maybe we just need... Hello? And maybe we just need some documentation so you can test yourself most okay. of the things, because okay. that's what uh, I did for the installer, for instance. Okay. And maybe it's just about making sure that all derivatives know this kind of documentation and each and everyone yeah. can do their own testing. Yeah, I'd appreciate that if we could talk to each other. Yeah. We're starting working for, to for accessibility features in Tails recently. And there are already some options in live boot to enable such features that were mostly inherited from Casper, I guess, I think. And um, those um, don't seem to be working that, <laughs> that much nowadays, but for sure we'll fix that in, in Debian Live shortly. So every other Debian Live system will have clear guidelines to what packages in shall be installed and what boot option shall be post. Is there a Debian accessibility working group, actually? Yes, the, there is, yes. Perfect. So we'll have to talk to each other. I think the, the Samuel and Mario Lang are the, the 
most active uh, people there, but there are others as well. Yes, and there is Mario Long as well. Yeah, Mario Long. Mm -hmm. uh, you and Mario. Mm -hmm. So, any other questions? Okay. So, my question is uh, not only about the patches, uh, how about the something that uh, in your derivations, but uh, still not in Debian? Uh, could you just fire some IFP? In Debian bug tracing system, so we that we know that uh, it is uh, able to package in Debian. Just a suggestion. Any comment? It's, um, so to restate the question to make sure I understand, you're asking that when we package something new in one of our derivatives, we always file an RFP in Debian for it. That thing is is able to package in Debian, but still missing Debian. And only in the deri derivations. I think it's uh, possible to fire a IFP bug, right? It, it is possible. At least for Ubuntu, we found that for many of the packages that were only in Ubuntu, we had a very hard time finding anybody who would turn that into an IFP or want to be a maintainer. Uh, we have a list and we could generate the set of RFP bugs if that's desired. From a Debian perspective, it turned out to me that um, RFP bugs are, in most cases, not very helpful. Because if you don't find an ITP, then you get, don't get the package in. So the best idea is if you see that you need some package, just push it yourself to Debian. But, but because finally, it, it's, you save some work afterwards if it's inside Debian. And I think you're mostly doing so. At least for Ubuntu, we've switched so that almost mm. all new packages go into Debian first because of that problem. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I yeah, there's a further question, and while the mic is handed over, I, I will uh, give uh, another answer from, from another talk. Just be bold. If you need some package, do it yourself. Do an ITP instead of an RFP. Try it. Yeah, um, I'm Stefan Rivera, also involved in Debian and Ubuntu. And I recall at UDS we had some conversation about filing um, off uh, requests for adoptions rather than RFPs for packages that are in Ubuntu that we haven't gotten to Debian yet but really should have. That might be a reasonable approach for derivatives because the packaging is all there. It just needs someone to adopt it and maintain it in Debian. In principle, this is, is the answer, I think. Yeah. Any other question? We have five minutes left, so. <laughs> Everything is clear, everything's fine, and so we, we can proceed as before. <laughs> <laughs> we have a close to empty to do list, um, and yeah, whatever. Some, st some statement at the end. Oh, no. We just finish and... It's related to the question you asked about NMUs. Mm -hmm. um, since we are build tails based on Debian stable, we are more interested in... Well, we are not more interested with as much interested in what happens after the package has been fixed in unstable. For us, it's mainly that it flows to, to testing properly and someone can upload it and ba squeeze back ports mm -hmm. currently. So the um, policy about uploading packages to backport was somehow clarified um, a few days ago at the backport uh, buff, uh, in particularly for packages that are installable from unstable or testing without rebuilding, uh, it was made clear that it was possible and welcome to upload backports of these packages to backpo the backports Debian service. In case there is um, some kind of user base who would benefit from it, not just only for your or my own convenience, <laughs> but if there is some user base that would benefit from it. and. My question is, do we consider a Debian stable-based derivative to be 
um, valuable user base who would benefit from having the package installable from backports rather than doing what we do currently, which is adding the unstable sources to our apt, apt configuration, um, which means shipping using having a longer build time, larger indexes, and have the need to maintain painting configuration. And it's really annoying for us. I would be glad to hear some kind of yes as an answer to this question. <laughs> well, I, I can't answer the question about backports. I admit I am, I'm, uh, should have uh, uh, see, see the, the backports uh, but, but I didn't, and um, in my opinion, it is quite a good chance to, to get um, a, a less weak system than unstable with, with the latest and greatest software, but I can't answer this, this question, so I'm not really competent. I'm not sure if the rolling um, releases might help you in this case. Yeah. Aware of rolling? The, the rolling? We have not decided yet if we are going to use rolling when it eventually happens to, to exist. Um, I'm not sure. Currently, I quite like our stable based builds and building image from testing mainly to, to be ready when it's released as the, as the new Debian release so that we can ship, uh, we shipped squeeze based images um, early in April this year, for example, and also to help Debian and uh, to help the release process to, to go on, but probably we using rolling a, as a basis for tails would be um, a bit too much overhead for us. Do you consider using rolling for Gremel? Um, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> uh, depends um, yeah, how the, the Software we depend on um, can be considered as um, fresh enough, and uh, um, I'm looking forward to see it um, in reality and give it a try. But I'm not sure either. Our main war. Well, we didn't discuss it that much yet, so I'm going to try for, to talk for myself. My main interest in using rolling as a basis for Tails would be uh, better new hardware support, mainly for Exorg, but it was already mentioned for an invention. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think this is the last question because we have to finish somehow, but uh, I would like to hear yeah, Colin first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, give comments, Colin, perfectly. Um, uh, so, uh, on the, from the other perspective, uh, for uh, given that Ubuntu normally uh, works from unstable, um, but uh, what we've done in the past is uh, when we're preparing a long-term support release, we have sometimes uh, merged from... Uh, from testing rather than from unstable, and uh, that's sort of the other perspective. Um, and that's we're we're still discussing whether we're going to do that in the future. It's um, it's had its ups and its downs. So um, we need to stop here now because the video team told us not to talk over 45 minutes. Uh, time's left, and I would really like to invite you to to look at the next talk of the DPL who is exactly about this topic, uh, what uh, are his ideas and or ideas of other Debian people, how we can enhance everything in the relations of, uh, to the derivatives. Thank you for attending. Thank you for organizing it. Yeah. Okay.